Welcome back to Running with the Wolves. I'm Christian and this is Dustin. We're here to bring you everything today about track and field, cross country, and in the uh, world of running. Today we've got two big topics we're going to be talking about. And the first is our special guest, the amazing Colleen Quigley, who is part of the Bowerman Track Club and she's an Olympic SEPA chaser for the United States of America. And the second being the Berlin Marathon where they are set to hopefully beat this world record um, and with three amazing uh, world-class racers. Uh, with that said, we're going to just jump right on in and um, give a warm welcome to Colleen. So, uh, Colleen, sure. thank you for obviously coming on today. This means a lot. Um, you know, this is something that me and Dustin have been looking forward to for a long time. Um, and we're really excited just to kind of talk about your career, you know, what it's been all the way from high school all the way up to now, you know, running professionally and where your future goals and aspirations are lying. So, with that said, um, how did you get started into running? Like, what called you to come to the sport? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm super happy to be here. And uh, I guess, so basically, I um, grew up dancing. I, um, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I danced uh, tap, jazz, ballet, point, the whole thing for like nine years. And, um, you know, learned coordination and spatial awareness and body awareness and got pretty strong doing that. And I played soccer as well um, in grade school. Um, and I really didn't, I played like, or I ran uh, grade school track and did the standing long jump uh, for like one year. My dad was the coach of the grade school team. and I really didn't like it. I uh, didn't want to be a runner at all. And my older brother is a runner, and both my parents ran marathons. Uh, so I just was like, I, I want to be a dancer, I don't want to be a runner. And so I, I kind of rejected the sport for a long time uh, until I got to high school, and I decided to go out for the cross country team in the fall because I was going to um, try out for uh, soccer in the spring. And so I wanted to like kind of get my endurance up and um, still kind of train in the fall, and then I was going to try out for soccer. But it turned out I loved the team and fell in love uh, with the girls. And it came time to try out for soccer in the spring. And I was too scared to try out anyway because the team was really good. And so I was like, oh, track is no cut. I'll just do that instead. So I kind of got into the sport just kind of on like accident or like by default. Um, but then I just fell in love with it. My dad decided to quit. He was coaching an all boys school uh, at the time. And so he decided to quit coaching them. And he was like, you guys need a good coach at Nerex where I was going as an all-girls school and so he traded over and now he's the head coach of the program. They've been on the podium uh, at state a few times. They won the state championship after I graduated uh, and they've taken a bunch of girls to state in, uh, in track as well. So it's kind of cool to see how that program um, has developed with my dad and I's uh, help and guidance and stuff. So. That's, I mean, tra uh, high school, track and cross country is where I fall in love with it for sure. And I never imagined it going any further than that. But um, it, the opportunities kept coming up to take a scholarship and go to Florida State. And so I couldn't say no to that. And, and then after that, it was like, you could do this professionally and go to the Olympics possibly. And I couldn't say no to that. And so everything just kind of like kept snowballing from there. Um, but I do like to tell people that I never like imagine that for myself I never even dreamed it or even had the idea we never talked about being a professional runner or going to the Olympics or even going to college um, and being a D1 athlete and being a national champion never talked about any of that in high school it was always just like kind of smaller goals and more um, reasonable attainable goals like I wanted to be a state championship a state champion by the time I, I graduated from Marys um, and so that was like the big goal and when you reach that you just like make another goal and that kind of kept me going in the sport without being um, overwhelmed and you know having these like big scary things it was just kind of like stepping stones and that's kind of kept me going um, but yeah that's kind of how I felt most of it to give that credit to my dad yeah that's awesome was it hard at all to you know obviously you know you being a dancer and you, you modeling and stuff was it I mean, like, was it a difficult decision when you made that, or and is it something you don't want to go back to? Or, I mean, are you are you glad? I mean, obviously, I know you're in love with the choice you made, but was yeah. it it's just yeah hard to make that decision at all? Um, to give up dancing and like modeling and stuff. Yeah, um, giving up dance was definitely hard because I had done it for so long, and I got to the point where I was um, going to school and then going to cross country practice and then going to dance class. 
and then trying to do homework, you know, and, and have dinner and, and get to bed at a reasonable time. And it just, like, it just wasn't working. I couldn't do it all. So I had to decide. And looking back, I don't know why I decided I decide to give up dance because I was doing that for so long and I loved it. Um, and I hadn't been running for that long. And looking back, I kind of, I thought about this before, like, why did I give it? I don't even know how I chose cross country and track over dance. Uh, what an idiot. <laughs> But for some reason, yeah, I I just decided that was what I wanted to do, and it was. I think it was really hard, but I don't really remember it being like traumatic. Um, I think deciding to give up modeling was very similar. I got to the uh, my senior year, and um, during high school, I kind of formulated this plan that I was going to move to New York when I graduated high school and work uh, with my agency kind of full time instead of doing like this. Um, part-time kind of whenever I could miss school deal that I was doing in high school mm-hmm. uh, and just do it full-time live in New York and you know like see if I can make it basically uh, and that was the plan and then all of a sudden senior year I started getting these offers to schools um, and like good offers to good schools and I was like oh you know it's gonna be kind of hard to turn this down it's a free education you can't really say to a college coach like I'd love to come can I come and like five years <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's now or never so I had to uh, make a decision then and I don't think that was really that hard either because I really felt like that was something that if I didn't do I would probably always regret and wonder what if um, which is something that I'm always you know always trying to avoid being like oh I wish I would have just given it a shot and the same thing when I decided to go pro um, there was a year until the Olympics and so the decision of should I try the modeling thing, because I always thought after graduation from college, then I'll go back to modeling. So then I had to make the decision again. And at that point it was, I'm afraid that if I go model and I didn't give it that year before the Olympics to try and see if I can make it, then I always wonder, like, what if I had just poured my whole heart into it for a year and joined a professional group and, like, done it big, could I have made it to the Olympics? And I always have that in the back of my head, like, what if? So I was like, even if it's just for a year, I have to give it a shot. And then obviously it turned out um, to be more than a year. So now it's just like what I do. Uh, but yeah, those decisions are definitely hard along the way. But I think you just, for me, I had, for, had to look at what I was going to get from each of them and also the time frame for those. Like, is this something I can push to later and still have the opportunity to do? Because in my mind, while I won't, it won't be the career I was going to have as a model. I could still do that later, whereas running, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't push that off until later, and so I had to take advantage of it right then. Um, and that kind of made the decision a lot easier for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, and going back to like your decision on going to Florida State, what was the selling factor? Uh, obviously, as a full Ocker national finalist in high school, what was the deciding factor for their over other schools? Um, um yeah. Basically, the deciding factor for me was Coach Harvey. I Mm -hmm. talked to a bunch of coaches and took a couple visits um, to some different schools, um, some some of the top schools at the time in the country. And so I had some good options. And, I mean, at every school I went to, the campus was awesome. And um, every team I visited was awesome. All the – I mean, you guys know, runners are the best people. So there was no team of girls that I didn't feel like I could – fit in with and they were all super nice and they're all really smart and they were dedicated and like everything you know any team um I felt like I could have been a a a team a member of but I guess when it came down to it is who do I want to run for who do I feel like I can 100% trust uh if they're going to tell me to jump I say oh how high like I could just completely buy into what it is that they were doing with the team and um, get the most out of myself um, with that person and for me that was I was most inspired and most excited about Coach Harvey because the way that she's she talks was um, you could tell that she's passionate about it and she cared so much a lot of people say she's super intense which is true she's super intense and so am I and I was like that's awesome you love what you're doing and I want to run for you like you seem like you care so much and I never am going to doubt um, that you are looking out for what's best for me and what's best for our team. So um, when it came down to it, she was the most inspiring and the most um, kind of trustworthy 
coach that I I met. So that kind of made the decision easy um, because so many of the other factors mm-hmm. were pretty comparable between the schools. Um, yeah. And so it really comes down to who do you want to run for? Yeah, for sure. And over your four years, what was your most memorable time um, over at Florida State? Like what race comes to mind uh, at Florida State? Obviously, national championship senior year in yeah. track is a big one, but if any other. That's tough. We had, so it's kind of funny, my favorite year at Florida State was probably my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the best team that year. We had so many girls who were so talented and worked so well together. I remember just workouts where we um, just did such a good job of supporting each other and cheering for each other and working together. There was never a sense of competition between um, teammates on that team. It was just a lot of support, um, especially from the older girls to the younger girls, Mm -hmm. which I think is so, so important. Um, They never felt like uh, I was, you know, I was a freshman coming in, but I was beating some of the maybe older, you know, sophomore, junior girls, and they were never bitter about that. It was always a sense of support and bringing each other up and um, supporting each other. And that was just, that was the best group of girls for sure. Um, And probably the most talent on any of the teams that I was on at Florida State. Um, Even though we kind of disappointed that year, we were supposed to win and still play freshman and sophomore year. And we were fourth both those years. So that was Mm -hmm. a disappointing end to the cross country season. But um, I still have so many, so many fond memories. I remember even sophomore year um, coming back in the fall and being so sad to be a sophomore because I just didn't want freshman year to end. I was like, I'm still a freshman. And I was telling everyone, like, I'm still a freshman. I'm just, just going to do it again. And they were like, you're crazy. Like, you can't do that. Um, but then my favorite race would probably have to be winning an NCAA title just yeah. because it was such a special moment that I'd been waiting for. And um, I got injured junior year and had to sit out mm-hmm. and and watch the race from home on um, my TV. And that was so hard to do. And yeah. so it made me just want it even more the next year. And I had one more shot at it. And so I just really, really wanted it to happen. And I was going up against the, um, the NCAA champ from the year before and the, the favorite for the race. And mm-hmm. so I was, I really wanted that. And it felt so much, so much sweeter when I crossed the line, having it taken away from me the year before. So Yeah, sure. So just the fangirl in that moment, my dad is from St. Louis. For people who don't know, my family is from St. Louis, and we watched that race live. And I can remember my dad in the kitchen making whatever god-awful army meal it was that night. And I remember because it was a bad meal. And he's screaming, go St. Louis, the whole time at the TV. <laughs> my dad awesome. never gets involved in track events like that, is like full-on screaming as if it was like Mizzou's college football oh, team. Like so sweet yeah and i was gonna watch this just like gonna call me up and goes i can't believe you said that i'm like but it's true dad <laughs> so but that was an awesome race too because that's how my Thanks, dad actually dad <laughs> yes i love that um that's how my dad fell in love with the steeplechase though and when my oh, brother got man. his man bun because my brother was obsessed with being exactly like evan evan jager <laughs> yeah my dad forced oh, my brother into the steeplechase which he did not want to do at all um, but okay. it was, oh, it was, it was funny. Did but he I end just, up liking never, it? Huh? Did he end up liking the steeple? Yeah. He did until he went over his last 1,500 meters, and he jumped, and I screamed at him, and he turned his head and fell face first into the two-foot water barrier. No! <laughs> and I'm real. Was, like, oh, as a twin brother, I just messed up severely. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you can't, you can't cheer as he's hurtling. Coach always, like... If we're um, doing a steep workout and he's yelling splits, he makes sure, even though the like the 400 mark is right before a hurdle, he doesn't yell the split until we hit the 400 mark, go over that hurdle, and then he tells us that lap split because he doesn't want us to break our concentration because of something like that. Yeah, and that's smart because my brother, he um, looks, at, well, I mean, at the time looked like me at all, but um, when he was running, he wasn't allowed to practice with hurdles because we had this hurdle coach at school he was like no you'll injure yourself so my brother goes into this race okay. behind, and I remember he comes over to me at the fence after he was warming up and he goes Christian you know like I'm a good runner but there's some like really great athletes here and he goes but I think they're all nervous I'm like why he goes well I heard a group of them saying like oh crap that looks like Evan Yeager's little brother <laughs> and my brother's got like thick blonde hair same type of build and stuff and uh I was like well good you need to go tell them that you're Evan Yeager's little brother yeah. <laughs> in the race but you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was... Tactics. It worked. Tactics. 
Oh man. I love that. He's got a Jager's got a couple uh look likes out there that are trying yeah. to try and copy this style. Yeah, this last like senior boys class last year, I was like, man, he really inspired the long guy flowing hair. I think that's pretty cool. Like if I saw a bunch of people out there with like my very specific hairdo, I would be like, dang, you know, like it's kind of cool. It kind of makes you feel pretty cool. Yeah. Evan, help my brother out because my brother is like the definition of a modern day hippie. Um, mm -hmm. So he was already sporting the hair and he didn't have a reason to keep it with my parents around. And so when he saw that Evan, he was like, okay, now I can just say I'm trying to mimic him and I <laughs> have to be okay with it. Yeah. So, um, it worked out. <laughs> Evan's awesome. So, you to touch on Rio, Justin? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, like you said, what was uh, Rio like? What was the atmosphere like of the race? Obviously, there's two rounds for it. So what was that like? Um, it was an incredible experience. Like I said earlier, I never grew up saying, I'm going to go to the Olympics. A lot of people who were there with me had that like Olympic dream that they were finally realizing from when they were five and they first saw the Olympics and they were like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, that was definitely not me, but it wasn't any less special for me. I think it was just different because I didn't really have much of an expectation going in about what it was going to be like or how it was going to feel or uh, anything. I was just kind of like there to experience it and just kind of see what it was going to be like. So uh, I didn't have a ton of expectation going in. I did um, compete at Worlds the year before. So I kind mm -hmm. of had, that was my first ever experience on the world stage competing against people from other countries. Yeah. Um, and so that I'm glad I had that experience under my belt because it's definitely different than competing in a steeplechase against American athletes who like know how to hurdle and um, you know, like don't shove each other on the track and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. um, that's you know, that's always different when you're competing against some of these international girls that throw bows all the time and they fart like the race and, you know, there's just a lot of unknown crazy stuff happening mm -hmm. so I was a little bit more prepared for that in Rio uh, luckily and I was trying to help Courtney be prepared for that too because that was her going to be her first time doing that um, and and she was like oh gosh I'm so glad you told me about how they slow up hurdle and then speed up and then slow down hurdle and then speed up and it's like oh god it's the most annoying way uh, to run a race but anyway um, it was definitely that was definitely the case um, the experience, like the vibe in the track uh, at the stadium was, was really cool. Um, the day of the prelim, I was competing, like I think it was just before, just after Usain Bolt, one of his mm -hmm. rounds. So the stadium was packed for that, um, which was awesome. The vibe was like very um, uh, en energizing and enthusiastic. So that was cool. It was a little quieter for the final. Um, definitely you could tell the difference, not as many people. And it was super hot for the final too. I think it was the hottest day um, of the whole uh, games. But um, it was an incredible experience. And I was kind of exhausted at that point. It had been a long season. And I got sick right after, which was a bummer. Um, but it was just kind of one of those things where I was just um, trying to just experience every moment and take mm -hmm. every moment in. And I was like, remember that how this feels and how it looks. And um, running out onto the track, you know, after their they call like women's super chase and they have this like big banner thing and you run out from underneath the stadium mm -hmm. and you know you're like trying to remember how that feels the whole time and like soaking it all in um maybe even just after and you're on the scoreboard and it's like then you can you look around really because you're not really doing that before you're trying to focus so after then you're like looking around all the people and how it feels to be on the track looking out into that huge stadium and um it's really special and something that i really try not to take for granted because who knows if i'll ever you know, get to do it ever again. Mm -hmm. So every time I get to do that, I try and, and really soak it all in. Well, I like that you said that because, you know, I've, um, so me and Dustin's coach back home was a, a, a college athlete um, at Indiana, but our girls coach was um, the uh, 800 meter record holder for, uh, not the name, for Barbados. Um, and he's a really quiet guy, but I asked him in the car on the way to States one day, I said, Coach, I got to ask. What was it like to walk into the Olympic Stadium, during, like just just to be there? And he said, unlike any other race, he goes, just to be at the Olympics is an experience. He goes, you could come in dead last, and he goes, sure, if you're like Mo Farah or something like that, it'll be disappointing, but it doesn't matter because the fact that you even got to be here and to come yeah. together in the world to compete, um, he said, is just absolutely amazing and phenomenal. And he said, it's just an experience that 
you'll and he was so like lively about it, like as he was reliving it, and he said it's just an experience that so many people will never be able to quite understand, even in the yeah. stadium watching it. He said it is just it, it's the pinnacle of your hard work, um, which I love. I love that because I, I think there's really like the Olympics, and you know, um, I was watching a documentary. Um, it was called The Golden Games for London. Um, and they said, you know, track and field is kind of the heart and uh, heart and soul of the Olympics, yeah. and it really is, you know. Um, which I, which I, actually leads into something that you kind of mentioned too, you know. In Rio, uh, you know, the, I, you could see that some of the stands weren't filled a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, like, even with big finals, you know, it was kind of small. Um, and we, me and Dustin, were just talking about this like a few weeks ago. You know, location really matters. Obviously, in the USA, it'll be packed. Um, and to me, like probably one of the coolest ones to watch was London. Um, actually, Usain Bolt came on and said uh, in an interview one time, he said it didn't matter if it was my final or my prelim. I don't think there was a day I was in that stadium that it wasn't filled to the brim. Yeah. Uh, people screaming, you know, my name or whoever's name was on. Um, and that's just so cool. You know, it's it's it, it's nicer to see some of the bigger countries that get it only because you know you work so hard just to be there. Yeah. It's nice to have. A lot of people come in and watch you. Um, totally. That's awesome that you, uh, you know, it's, I think that's, you know, me and Dustin always look to get Olympians on here because, you know, at, at your stage and at your level, I mean, you guys are just being able to enjoy, you know, you guys, we, we get to show people what hard work at, is at its peak, you know, and that's, um, yeah. that's the essence of running is just pushing yourself each and every single day of your life um, and just to be a better person for it. So with that said, um, as great as running is, because you know you work so hard, you train really hard, you push yourself to be uh, a better person, and it doesn't always come to fruition. So <laughs> we're gonna ask you about it. Speaking um, of London. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of London, yeah. um, let's skip five years later. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Uh, how do you? Uh, could you take us through your world championship um, yeah. in 2017? Yeah. So well, first of all, like you said, um, for. The London Olympics, you know, I wasn't there for that one, but I heard the same thing that it was like super jam packed every day. The stadium had an amazing energy, people were super into it, every event was crowded. And I would say that was the same for World Jams this summer. It was that stadium was incredible. That felt like an Olympic stadium to me. It was, I, you know, I came in for the prelim and it was on fire and you come in for the final and it's crazy again like I was in the stands for the final but um, it was insane um, they did such a good job it felt like I love um, when you're at those track events like that because they have it feels like if you were in the stadium um, like not in the stands but like in the walkway like around the stadium you could feel like you're at a football game at a football stadium or a baseball stadium because they had all these vendors with all kinds of food and you know they're serving alcohol there's like beer and you know wine and stuff and it is like and people are out there they're like get it it's a whole event it's a whole production uh, which we don't often get in the states so that was just really cool to see a track meet just really done right um, and it was it was incredible it made me wish I could have been there uh, for the Olympics uh, five years ago. So, but uh, yeah, so for me, London was obviously less than what I had hoped for. We trained super hard all year. Um, I feel like I had been making really big improvements going into Rio. I had been injured almost the entire year going into that. I uh, was out almost all fall with an injury that I had sustained over the previous summer. Um, and then got back into training that um, winter for like a month. We went to altitude, I got a good month in, came back from altitude, instantly got injured again, and was injured all through that spring, basically up until 10 weeks before the Olympic trials. So that was just, not, that was not an ideal year for me, and it was pretty much a miracle that I still made the team. And so I was just felt super lucky to be there and be an Olympian, because at many points I was thinking it just wasn't gonna happen. Um, so this year was much different. I mm -hmm. still spent a little bit of time being injured off and on, but mostly uh, just like little things. I miss like a day here, a day there, but not like those months of no running that I did in 2015 and in 2016. So um, I was doing workouts in the fall with the girls. Like before I was in the pool, 
um, watching through the big windows of the Nike pool, watching the girls in the grass field do mild repeats. Mm -hmm. This year, I'm out on the grass field with them, you know, hating life, but doing mild repeats with them and uh, and, in a load of pain, but uh, appreciating that too because I knew what it felt like to not be there. So I, you know, I'd done all the work and I felt like a, a much stronger athlete this year. Um, and I didn't fizzle out as early in the summer as I did the year before. And so I felt like I've been making all this growth. Um, and you know, you can see what Courtney did uh, at Worlds in the final, and which was incredible. And a lot of people asked me if I feel like I would have been there. I have no clue what would have happened if I would have been the final. Who knows um, if I would have been second or third or eighth or tenth or I have no idea what would have happened, obviously. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I train with Courtney. Uh, we do almost every workout together. We had a little bit of a different schedule this summer because I did a race in, Ho- in Hosen in Belgium that she didn't do, and mm-hmm. then she did a race in Lucerne um, that I didn't do. So there was like a few weeks there where, where the Bowerman babes were on some different schedules for workouts. Um, but we do like a lot of the same stuff together, mm-hmm. and almost every workout we're doing together. So that is kind of like I yeah I'm you know a comparable runner to her I think um, so obviously watching the final from the stands and um, cheering the the girls on because watching us go one two was incredible um, it was also incredibly sad for me because I felt like I deserved to be there and I felt I really felt like I ran a great prelim and that had given the opportunity to run the final it, it would have gone really well so that was it was just really hard for me and then I got food poisoning the next day um, and it was throwing up all night and it took me like four days to recover and get you know my body feeling right after that, which was like another setback. Um, yeah, so it was just, it was not the summer that I was looking for and then I felt like I was ready to have um, mentally, uh, physically. Um, so then after that, I just was trying to mentally get my head back on and still finish the season on a, at least semi-high note Um, because I didn't want to, you know, end it on that. So I still had some good opportunities left to race, and I went to, um, I got into my first time in League 1500, Mm -hmm. which was, I was like, okay, you know, it doesn't all suck. I ran 403 this year, which is um, huge for me. And Not everything is sucky. I was texting my brother being like, oh, like, life sucks or something, and he was like, you PR'd in two events this year, like, shut up, you know? (laughs) I was like, okay, fine, you know, um, life is not perfect, but I definitely did have some, you know, things to be grateful for, for the season, um, so came away with a 9.15 in Berlin, um, a few weeks later, Courtney was sweet enough to pace me, uh, for 2k of that, uh, before she went home to Portland, and then, um, all the, well, a lot of the Bowerman babes went to, um, New York to run the fifth half mile in mm-hmm. their season, so, that was definitely a high note too, uh, to be able to compete with them. And it felt a little bit like cross country in that sense that we were like warming up together and we we're on the same start line and mm-hmm. we're on the same race. And we haven't done that as a group. You know, I run, sometimes I race with Shelby and sometimes I race with Courtney, but to have all four of us out there in the same race was really fun too. Um, and my first road mile ever, which, which was awesome. So um, came back a little bit from London and I'm pretty much over it now, but it definitely, um, it was heartbreaker, and I feel like I was robbed of a chance um, at a really amazing race in a year where, honestly, the Kenyans were off their game, and it was the perfect race. Um, yeah, I don't know where they were at. I mean, missing the water barrier is a brutal mistake, um, and it was just the perfect opportunity for Emma and Courtney to just, you know, take advantage of that, and they were super brave, and they had really smart races, and they did. Um, and who knows when that'll happen again? And we won't even get to know um, for another two years, which really sucks because there's not a world championships next year. So mm-hmm. we have to wait until. until yeah. Uh, Speaking of world championships, world it is a world indoor year um, yeah. coming up this year. What are your plans for that? Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see what Jerry has in, in mind. Uh, we're taking our little break right now, mm-hmm. which means that we don't talk to Jerry. We don't want to see him. He doesn't want to see us. We get a break for a while. Everybody needs a break. Um, so, we, and we haven't even started talking about what's going to happen for indoors yet. We just kind of take it one season at a time. But I would love to go to Birmingham. Um, I think my 
preference would be to go shorter than longer as far as distance. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this deal with Jerry that I don't have to run a 5k until I tell him that I want to run a 5k. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to be a while. Wait, uh, uh, K was indoors though. Could you? While a three K would be, yeah. So a three K would be an option. But God, I I should run a three K. This I definitely will run a three K this year indoors because my PR is embarrassing. I think. Oh yeah, officially when I ran in Berlin, I officially run faster in steeplechase than I have in the flat three K. Mm-hmm. So that's about it. Anyway. But I just look very watch hate the three K indoors. It's horrible. It's so. <laughs> It's so fast. It feels like you're running a mile, but you have to keep going. It's just yeah. so long. So I don't know. We'll see. I'd rather run. I'd rather go shorter and just like run a mile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. You mentioned uh, so many things I wanted to touch on. Um, <laughs> starting with disappointment. I know how you, now my disappointment oh, is yeah. not on stage, but Dustin can attest to you. Dustin has been. Um, which is funny because me and Dustin, I, do, I don't think we are friends, but Dustin is my best friend, um, and he uh, was is my training partner. So it's it's weird. This is our first, well, second year apart from each other, but um, it was crazy because he was always there for me in high school. But my senior year, um, I'll never forget. My favorite year of high school running was uh, my junior year. It was like all it was five of us. I had four seniors. I was a junior. It was a, we would just work together. We pushed, and it was like not really competition. It was just just trying to yeah. work the team. Um, and so I'll never forget it. My my our captain came up to me uh, my, at the banquet right before my senior year. He said, "Hey, dude." He goes, "You're our guy." He goes, "You're the only one coming back next year." And he goes, "You're that kid who's gonna finally be the second kid to go sub 16 and break that school record." And um, I'll never forget it. That whole summer, killer workouts, killer training, absolutely crushing it. And then it was like three weeks before the season start, I blew out my left knee. Um, came back halfway through the season, ran a great race. My coach was like. Oh, good! You're coming back. He goes. You might be able to salvage something. And literally a week later, I blew out my right knee. Uh, yeah. And then I came back, and I had a pretty decent track season. I got back up to you know being being up in the front spot with some guys, but nothing to do. Yeah. With what I did. Um, and it only got worse. But it was inspiring to hear you because I came to school, and I knew that going to a D1 school, not having a great season, I'll probably have to walk on. Yeah. Uh, and try my best. And not but a year ago. To two two days from now, exactly a year ago, um, I uh, got a stress fracture in my shin, and it's now what they think is compartment syndrome, and I haven't oh, ran in a year. Oh. Yeah, so it's like so I can understand the heartbreak because I literally have not ran a solid week in um in in, in exactly a year now. So uh, yeah, you know the struggle, the injury struggle. Yeah. Yeah. After the six months mark, I started getting used to it, but like yeah. you know, it's not easy. I watch Dustin; he texts me every morning his great workouts and. I initially text back. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. And half of me is like, God, I'd love to just be able to jog in place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's awesome, though. You know, having, um, you know, you, especially with Courtney, having somebody that you're yeah. close with that you can, that can run with. And Dustin, every day, texts me. He goes, oh, don't worry, dude. He goes, we'll be, we'll be running the marathon together in, uh, in uh, uh, Los Angeles one day. Don't worry. You'll yeah. come back. <laughs> there you go. So exactly. it's good to have some of that. And, you know, Dustin, I just, I think it's important to, um, you know, we always, are aiming questions towards our viewers. Find somebody that you can connect with specifically. Oh, totally. And you know, I, I can thank Dustin again for this. I'll never forget it. I got kicked out of a race because my it was my coach's fault. I'm gonna say it on this interview when it goes big one day. Um, it was my coach's fault. You coach know, Sharp. Was, yeah, Coach Sharp. But um, Dustin. You're my boss there. Yeah, I just called him out. But uh, we uh, we showed up to a race. He let me run this really slow individual race. He said you can run it, but you're gonna be by yourself and there's no one to pace you and. Dustin says, don't worry, dude, I got a race in two days, but I'll come out and pace you for this one. And actually led me to a PR that race. Um, okay. And sacrificed himself. Made our coach mad, but you did it for me. So, uh, you know. Good teammates are, like, you can't, you cannot um, replace them. There's yeah. nothing you can do uh, if you don't have good teammates and you need support. I mean, that is the only way I got through that year. Um, 2015 and 2016 where I was injured all the time if I was by myself I definitely would not have made it Um, it was just like constantly people like Shalane who's been in the sport for years and um, she's helping guide me to know how much cross training to do and um, she was even injured for part of that time so cross training with her Mm -hmm. was really motivational Um, and just being constantly being feeling like I was supported by them and them constantly you know you're going to get through this. I know it feels like probably, you know, you can 
uh, relate to just feeling like you're never going to be able to run healthy again like after months and months and months yeah of, of not being able to run and just cross training you're like well this is going to be my life now like I'll never run again and you mm -hmm. feel like that oh, yeah. um, and then you get you get healthy and you start running again and you're like oh, I'm never going to get injured again you know this is not going to go and the truth struggle. is you will be able to run again and you will get injured again <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yep, yep, so it's just the state of, of I'm healthy. Yeah, for now I'm like always trying not to jinx it. Um, but yeah, it just it goes and it ebbs and flows. And you know, even when you're injured, uh, you have good days and bad days. And um, I feel like whenever I'm not running, I feel like I'm uh, like a recovering alcoholic or something. Where I'm like a recovering addict. I'm like I have my good days and my bad days. You know, like sometimes I'm in a dark place and then sometimes I have hope. <laughs> and that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, but yeah, to have people around you and supporting you and, and reminding you that you will get through it and, um, you know, just taking you out for lunch or something to not think about it for an hour. Yeah. Is really important. For sure. Yeah, it is. That's why we started this because I was having, my, my whole year last year was, uh, besides school, was calling my mom like every You're like, week. I need something else. Yeah. So I thank my mom because I know she watches these religiously. And, and then and I thank something because Dustin was like, you know, let's start this interview. Let's take it. Let's keep you in running, but like you know, take your mind off it at the same time. And so it's yeah, kind of started doing this. But um, so yeah. So to all our people watching, whether you're a high school runner or just a person that goes for a jog, have somebody there with you because it does yeah. make all the difference. Um, and so I guess before we go, we always come to our final remarks. But you know, just some funny tidbits. How do you feel being from St. Louis? The Cardinals are doing this season. They have I don't know. I don't even know how the Cardinals are doing. Well, they just had a big win, like <laughs> that out of the video. <laughs> and we'll just do a voiceover saying, "Oh, you know." Gosh, all darn, I should have looked it up before this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, that's it. so. Um, so I again for them every time. At least Colleen can can front me on this. Um, because every time somebody asks me who's from a different city, which is everybody, mm -hmm. Ted Drew's ice cream. Oh yeah, that has ever been created. Now that I can speak to. <laughs> right. That's Baseball. Olympic of food. <laughs> Ice cream, yes. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's all I care about. Ted Drew <laughs> has been Olympic approved. That's a statement they're being endorsed. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, I yeah. do love the Cardinals, but mostly just like um, when you're home, you hear about it more, and when you can go to the game, it's way more fun. Like I'm never gonna watch baseball on TV. It's so yeah. boring. Yep. Um, you can go. It's a whole experience, and you get the food and like the whole thing the peanuts and everything you go to the game it's so fun but I'm never going to watch it on TV um, I might hear about it in the news but I obviously haven't so <laughs> but Ted Drew's is awesome that's yeah, definitely every time I go home actually if you combine the two that's perfect you go to the game and then you get Ted Drew's after yes yeah yeah did you okay I'm just going to ask because now do you know where the hill is in St. Louis of course that's yeah, okay. so good in the world. And yeah, yeah, that's where my family's like from. Is like they worked in like Dogtown and stuff. And on the oh, road. awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So St. Louis, best city in the country. Um, Absolutely. The awesome. um, New York City. What's up? Awesome. Uh, that, yep, New York City, right there. Actually, me and my brother, like you were saying about you know uh, modeling before. Me and my brother is like lifelong goal is to start a suit company there. Uh, a suit company? Yes, me and my brother worked. God, we sacrificed living in Florida, going to an outdoor school. We would wear suits like two times a week just so we could win best dress of yeah, like then, a class of like 3,000 kids, which we did. Yeah, then Andrew yeah. wore uh, sweatpants and uh, flip-flops every day okay, after it. Okay, yeah, my senior year, I carried us through that. Andrew, if you're watching this, you know I carried us through that. <laughs> um, but yeah, me and my brother, uh, we got really big oh. into fashion and stuff. So our oh, like lifelong suit. dream, he gets out of the army, we're collecting money together, and we're going to start a... It's like high end fashion, but we want to make it like cheaper for like kids to buy because kids would ask me and Andrew in high school like, "How do you guys get fit tailored suits, but like without costing three thousand dollars?" And like, yeah. we do a lot of bargain shopping. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's something that we kind of wanted. This to This reminds me of have you seen that show? I think it's on HBO. How How to Make It in America? Or oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Isn't that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I think How to yep. Make It in America. Yeah, that was a good show. I didn't. Think, I don't think it la like lasted very long, but. That was basically it. These like two guys were friends. They were like trying to um, make like clothes and like t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's the goal. It's the goal. Just yeah. Want to retire in Ireland one day alone from everybody else. You know, it's yeah. That's the dream. But um, with that's that, said, like, um, 
yeah, with that said, this has been, you know, we thank you for your uh, amazing insight. And before we go, we always ask the same question. Um, and we just kind of go over, you know, the people that we're shooting out for. It's not just high school and college athletes. It's people who use running as a lifestyle. Because running yeah. truly is a life-changing event in your life. And I know for me, and most honestly high school runners, it's not something your parents force you to do. My dad was a soccer player. Um, in St. Louis, big goal scored stuff. We played soccer our entire life. I just showed up to a basketball meeting. And my coach was like, you have no natural talent, but damn, you can run. And I was like, great. And I was like, should I go out? Hated it. I wore like $20 Target tennis shoes. Um, but I fell in love with it. And honestly, for me, it's not about the competition so much as it is being out there, praying with God, and just you know finding out to be a better me uh, yeah. than I was before. So we we're just going to ask, what does running mean to you aside from all the competition and stuff, and how has it changed your life? Yeah, I mean, like you said, aside from the competition part, which I obviously love, like that's, you know, why we put in all the hard work and do all these workouts that are so hard and, you know, make you want to die is so that you can compete and, and do well. Um, but even beside that, some of my favorite running moments have been um, when we go on altitude camp, we always go – these amazing locations in the mountains, you know, with um, incredible views on dirt roads that you barely see anyone. Like we could go for an hour or an hour and a half long run and not see anyone else besides us, mm -hmm. besides our teammates. Um, and just the mountains and you're in, uh, like if we go to Flagstaff, you're kind of like in the desert with mountains and the views are incredible. And, you know, we have uh, a great group and we hang out all the time and sometimes on a run like that we're just silent there's not really anything to talk about and we're just comfortable with each other's silence and we're just out there running and you, all you can hear is the uh, our, our footsteps on the on the dirt and you know some birds or something and that's when I feel so grateful to be able to do that to have my body that is um, strong enough to do that and um, you know, a group of people that I can do it with, and just to be out there in such a peaceful place, I call it um, like kind of like my church, because I don't go to church, but I feel connected to a higher power when I'm out there and having those kinds of moments of just silence and peace and gratitude for where I am, and um, sometimes even that happens on a long run where I hate long runs, and I'm in like, you know, the last 30 or 40 minutes, and I'm like, I just want to be done, um, but if I can just get myself to look around me and stop focusing on the pain and focus on how incredible it is that I'm here and able to do this, then um, it's so it, it's so nice and it, it makes you feel um, really grateful that I don't have to sit at a desk all day, you know, uh, looking at a computer screen and um, sitting in a cubicle. So it's amazing. Running has taken me places I never thought I would go. I got, I've gotten to travel to so many countries and so many cities that um, I never imagined so that's been incredible and just meeting so many people um, I'm not biased or anything but I think runners are the nicest people ever and so I hardly ever find runners that are, you know, are mean spirited people so so many kind people that are even aren't, aren't on my team or maybe aren't even in my event but I see at different meets and um, you know are always super happy and friendly and remind you you know just to be kind and stuff so um, amazing places, amazing people, just so many great opportunities that um, I never would have had without running. So mm -hmm. it's been a great journey, and I definitely um, am happy to be a professional runner. I mean, I thought, never thought I would say that, but I'm a professional runner. I do this as a job. They pay me. It's pretty great. <laughs> um, and so just to remember that, even if I get you know kicked out of the final at Worlds, um, I'll get another shot and. Um, I'm still super happy to be able to be here. So yeah, for sure. And yeah. one yeah, last thing, <laughs> always uh, have to ask to young runners out there who are trying to aspire to be better at what they're doing and enjoy it more. What is your advice to them to you know find their peace with it? Yeah, um, I think you know, especially kind of high school runners today, I find are. It's kind of weird, but I think they're kind of taking the sport too seriously, um, too young, and they're just putting a lot of pressure on themselves and trying to um, be super, super good at a really young age. And so whenever I get like emails and Instagram messages from those types of high school athletes who are really worried about where they're at and, you know, am I going to get a scholarship to a D1 school and stuff, I'm just like, hey, 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 like just, 
you know, calm it down and recognize that this is hopefully a long road and this is just like the beginning of it and you don't have to be a superstar at age 16. I certainly was not and I've just had this kind of more of a gradual slope and there was you know some ups and downs along the way but it was not um, success right away and I wasn't a state championship or state champion uh, my freshman year you know and I wasn't an NCAA champion my freshman year it took me a while to get to reach those goals but if you just kind of consistently keep working um, and and don't try and be an overnight success I think that's going to be a better route um, my teammate Amy Hastings was kind of a, a high school sensation but typically the ones that are high school sensations so she's an exception um, but typically those uh, who are amazing in high school they just don't last that long so mm -hmm. I mean if you want that okay but if you want a longer career and um, success kind of more spread out later on and hopefully a higher peak mm -hmm. um, I would just say do less almost less stress less miles like 70 miles a week in high school is ridiculous which is what I hear a lot of these like NXN athletes are doing, um, at least some of them, not a lot of them maybe, but um, just doing too much too young. Um, and then also you just lose the fun aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes too stressful and it's more of a job. And as soon as it's not fun anymore, like running is still fun for me. And I know the moment that it's not fun and it feels like work and it feels like something I have to do. I mean, some days it feels like work for sure, but mostly most every day it doesn't feel like work it's just something I love and I do it um, but I know that if it becomes something I hate and I dread because it's you know a stressor in my life then it's it's game over it's not going to be um, beneficial for me anymore I'm not going to improve really so keeping it fun keeping it light and remembering that like it's just running it's not life or death situation it's just running so that's what I try and tell younger kids that are just stressing out about overnight success too much. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Colleen, for coming on. It's been amazing hey. to have you on here. Um, loved having you on here. Um, anything yeah. Christian wants to say? I said great questions. Um, I really appreciate you asking me on and having such a lovely conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so before we go, let's do our announcements real fast. We didn't have too many today. Um, me and Dustin, um, we're planning a lot of things, guys, for you, because um, frankly, me and him have been wanting to do this since very early in high school. Yeah, four years um, ago. So this, yeah, exactly. Um, so summer for us is going to be a big deal. Um, obviously, you guys are just watching our podcast right now, um, but basically every dime we make on our own jobs, like some of the jobs after this, Christmas stuff goes into this, um, so there will be definitely developments coming in the future. Um, next week, I believe we're going to have the uh, the awesome and upcoming Justin Knight on, um, so obviously NCAA uh, champion or uh, medalist, and then um, you know going to, with Canada to the uh, World Championships. Um, so it'll be great to have on. Uh, we hope to bring Colleen back on in the future. She's got uh, you know she's gonna have to go through her camps and stuff like that first, obviously. <laughs> but you know after she brings home golds and stuff, we'll we'll be sure to you know um, you know interrogate her again. So uh, confidence. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll let you guys know what we're going to be on sites wise and stuff. Uh, me and Dustin, um, uh, you know, try to plug ourselves every way possible. So after we get off here, we'll start plugging ourselves and letting you guys know where you can find us on links in the description and stuff. And we've been getting with more um, proprietors. Uh, you know, we just got hit up by FL Runners and we're working with, trying to work with Mile Split now and Die Stat. So, um, and after that, moving to like Runners World and stuff. And so, um, yeah, so just keep looking for updates, guys. Um, thank you again, Colleen. Um, this has been amazing. Uh, we were really excited and looking forward to having you on today and just, you know, just so thankful that you got to share your insight with uh, younger athletes and athletes from all over the spectrum in the sport. So Absolutely. Thank you, guys. It was awesome. With that said, see you guys later and tune in next week. Bye.